his vision of paradise is probably the weakest thing that he's got uh, going for him. We're all better on hell since we've lived more of it. <laughs> And uh, the Inferno is, of course, is a great masterpiece, but you don't, need, uh, you don't need, need a template, a Christian template, to have worked that one out. Hades was a pretty good one to start with, and that preceded by centuries uh, the Christian uh, mythology. That people in every culture in the world have imaginatively generated ideas of exalted and less exalted spiritual states and they've done this by thinking what are the forms of true happiness which human beings might hope for visions of paradise and what are the states into which we find ourselves when we give way to hatred and greed uh, and you generate visions of hell so i think the great pictures which you find in in all world cultures really are imaginative visions of what human life is like if it's really exposed for the brute basic motives which lie at the heart of it what about the atomists? Now, I incline to that more than anything else, Lucretius, Democritus. That we are forever a part of the universe, like it or not. The atoms that comprise each one of us here, everyone on Earth, that comprise every galaxy, all came from the same source. You can say the Big Bang fits in with God, uh, that he did make a Big Bang, but then again, maybe he didn't. Anyway, we do know that as atoms, we returned. Now, the knowledge that you're never outside the universe, I would have thought would be a great riff for uh, uh, Thomas Aquinas or somebody with a bit of imagination, but they never came to it. They had to have good, evil, Garden of Eden, and uh, it's too simplistic, and it's, uh, it's, it's just not very interesting anymore. There are people who have a very clear idea about what happens after death, people... And I didn't even believe in God in that, in that time. I was just like, perhaps you, um, sir. I didn't believe that there was a God, perhaps. But until God revealed himself to me and told me that he is the answer for me in order that I may live, that's when I came to the knowledge that there is a God. And today I can say that I'm serving God in the form of Jesus Christ today. Amen. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'd like to turn to the role of the afterlife for the final section. Gobidal, uh, Immanuel Kant, the great philosopher, said that um, without the afterlife, morality couldn't survive. Now, what's your response to that idea? God is blackmailer. Uh, God is a warden of the prison. We created us all in his image, probably a mistake and uh, then allows us to run wild and punishes us or rewards us with his beaming vision of himself. This is no God I really want to have any traffic with at all. But the particular you, but, idea... I mean, the idea that good behavior only depends upon your fear of what will happen to you after you die, that you will be punished. Well, that excludes all of philosophy. Mm. It excludes Plato, it excludes the mystery cults of Greece, it excludes the, uh, the Roman idea of what is a good man. There, there goes Marcus Aurelius, there goes Epictetus, there goes the Stoics. These are all better thinkers than anything that the Christian church has come up with in 2,000 years. Keith Walker, That's why I'm an atheist and not an agnostic. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. <laughs> we are all agnostics, but I'm against this, yes. Right. Uh, and there may be some pictures of God that one would be against, but uh, with regard to morality, I think there are two questions which are why should you do things because they're right? Now, it's just a question. I'm not giving a glib answer. I'm just saying it's a question which should trouble everyone, really, but an atheist just has to say, well, because it's right, full stop. Well, an atheist can at least say, though you wouldn't like um, me saying this, perhaps, that, that, that God actually desires that you do this because it's for good, and that good will in fact, in the end, come to fruition. The religious, I think, find, well, there are things in human experience which point to a much more positive attitude to them. How do you and explain the goodness God. of Marcus Aurelius of, of several thousand years before Christianity I would say what Justin Martyr said, uh, that, uh, in fact, uh, these p he, the way he put it was, uh, there have always been Christians, but they were not always called such. That's one way of getting around it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you could, what what, uh, what Susan, one would say in modern terms is that the Holy Spirit works in hidden ways in the hearts of all people. 
uh, but can be recognized by those whose minds are illumined by God. That's what I would say. I wouldn't <laughs> bet on it. <laughs> Susan Greenfield. Uh, but I'm not quite sure what the options are here, because <laughs> I, in, in the afterlife, because it seems there's several, and it's important that we're discussing what the point of it is, or how it influences this life. Is, is it just non-specifically living after death? Is it living as the person one is? Is it living in heaven if one's good? Is there a hell if one's not? Is there a limbo? And I think each of these scenarios have played their part in how people have um, behaved o over the centuries. Well, one thing that has played its part is the afterlife as a consolation. And June Rowland, who is an Anglican bereavement counsellor, is here. And how far do you think that the afterlife uh, plays a big part in, 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 in consoling people? Most people that I've visited as, as a bereavement counsellor have a concept of the afterlife. Um, they may worry about it and they may want to discuss it with us but it is something that gives them consolation the person they have loved has gone on elsewhere to something that is better that is the best they can imagine and i don't think that's where words fail us all we don't know what it is but it is something that is perfect that is better that is with god and as a christian i would say to be with god also your life and to continue in a close relationship afterwards is what what i would would hope for. People want to know that the people they love are still there, are still cared for, are, are having a better life and have not just disappeared. I think that's important to them. Thank you very much. I'm just going to go final round here. What's your reaction to that, Keith Ward, and what's your final statement on, on this, uh, uh, this much disputed, in this programme anyway, notion that there is an afterlife and that it has a purpose? I certainly think if anyone believes in God, they have, and that that God is good, uh, they have good reason for thinking that there is a life beyond this, whatever form exactly it takes. And of course that's a consolation. Uh, I, I do want to reiterate, you shouldn't just believe in an afterlife because it's consoling. You should believe in an afterlife because there is a God and your life will find its true fulfilment uh, in knowledge and love of God. Does any of that strike any sort of chord with you, Susan Greenfield? Um, I jib slightly at this should all the time. I don't like obligations being put upon me. Certainly, I respect enormously people's belief. But just as they might believe, or I believe that I love my husband, they might believe they love their husbands or wives. I wouldn't ask them for proof of that. I wouldn't be able to furnish proof I love my husband as such. But, of course, I vehemently hold to that belief. Similarly, I wouldn't expect them to prove what they're saying. And somehow, this, these concepts of evidence and proof, and you should do the same as me, I find deeply, deeply worrying. I think what's more important is to realise that we are individuals. Everything is rooted finally in our brain. My own view is that. Now, if anything exists in a physical sense beyond that, then I myself can't buy into that new physics, but if people believe that, then, and that gives them comfort, then please, you know, who am I to say, to gain say that? I differ from Mr Ward, who said that uh, to be a Christian, uh, because it is a consolation, in believing in an afterlife is not a good reason for being a Christian. I think the eloquent lady from the audience who is in the business of consolation is far better than any professional Christian, I don't know what her religion is, but far better in consoling others and even though she may believe that what they think is going to happen next or has happened to their loved ones she is not being a good Christian, Mr. Ward. She's being a good human being. Well, thank you very much. That'll be the final word. 